let's get into it coach Colin. here we have just about de niro's most unhinged rant it has a lot of the same talking points but this time he's holding it like press conference style and listen if you don't know what this is this is obviously the mainstream media and the administration current administration this is their damage control for what trump did in the bronx in new jersey trump has been just hitting it time after time after time he's been bringing america together blacks whites latinos everybody right and it's getting it's getting positive press everywhere cnn couldn't deny it cbs couldn't deny it fox of course loved it msnbc couldn't deny it and now they're going to what they always do which is they roll out a celebrity whoever's willing to do it and that celebrity just rants about donald trump doesn't bring a policy no substance no real context to what they're saying they just they just have at it and that's what de niro did let's start this off this is gonna be a little let me just go real quick because i gotta show you guys something i love this this is my neighborhood downtown new york city I grew up here and feel at home in these streets. I feel comfortable. He said he feels comfortable in these streets. Listen, he's surrounded by cops. Feels real comfortable in his hometown. Hey, are you sure, man? <laughs> Check this out. Let's go, let's go. Straight up. Are you on the left? Are you on the left? You're not going to intimidate. That's what Trump does to try to intimidate. We have to fight back. We're trying to do it in the world. We're trying to be gentlemen in this world, the Democrats. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. You are You <laughs> real comfortable. Hey, this is my hometown. I feel real comfortable. You're a fake. Your movie suck. <laughs> Are you sure, man? Are you sure? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, hey, listen, I'd be comfortable, too, if I was surrounded by just all of these people that were supplied to me by the Biden administration. I would do that, too. I, I, I would be I feel real comfortable wherever I was if everybody around me was armed. And I was just saying these talking points that I've been told to say by the people in power. And if I say them good enough in my mind. Those people will remain in power and I'll remain protected and I'll be the person who helped them get into power. His, his game plan is so, not even just him, their game plan is so transparent. The fact that Robert De Niro keeps on doing this a couple of years ago, it was like, wow, he really doesn't like Trump. And then it kept going. You're like, yeah, that guy still doesn't like Trump. He in the past, what, four months, three months has gone on different from the view msnbc interviews now a straight up press conference saying the same exact things over and over and over again it's it's always he's violent it's always he won't leave it's always the same exact stuff and you're telling me these aren't talking points these aren't just his talking points that he has if this was a person who was really concerned for the American people, wouldn't he break down a policy? Wouldn't he bring up something good that Biden has to offer? Nothing. Listen, I don't just have jokes, ladies and gentlemen. We got some more clips. Check out Robert De Niro. Let's go. I love this city. I don't want to. Oh, too fast. Too fast. No, no, we got it. We got to hear De Niro. We got to hear him. He has, he has important things to say. Destroy it. Donald Trump wants to destroy not only the city, but the country, and eventually he could destroy the world. But we vowed we would not allow terrorists. To... I owe this city a lot. And that's why it's so weird that Donald Trump is just across the street. 
because he doesn't belong in my city. I don't know where he belongs, but he certainly doesn't belong here. We New Yorkers used to tolerate him when he was just another grubby real estate hustler masquerading as a big shot, a two-bit playboy lying his way into the tabloids, pretending to be a spokesman, a spokesperson for himself. He was calling it as himself for himself to fool the press into inflating his net worth. A clown. But this city is pretty accommodating. We make room for clowns. We have them all over the city. People who do crazy things in the street, we tolerate it. It's part of the city, it's part of the culture. But not a person like Trump who will eventually run the country. That does not work, and we all know that. Anyway, we make room for clowns to each his own. But no one takes him or took him really seriously. They take him seriously now, of course. But around the country, people who didn't know him, as we did, started to support him. They bought into his bullshit. Trump bought their votes with outrageous lies and empty promises. He got the most religious evangelicals to applaud a sinner who bragged about sexual assault. And in just a couple of blocks from here, a jury found him liable for sexual abuse. Somehow, he even got self-styled patriots to support a man who called for terminating the Constitution. And on January 6th, rallied an angry mob to threaten democracy, leaving death and destruction in its wake. Uh, again, same talking points. But here's the main thing. Here's a new talking point. He doesn't belong in my city. Robert, where do you live? Where does Robert De Niro live? Is it California? Hey, is he an actor? Hey, has he been in multiple films? Hey, do you know how long it takes to actually shoot a film? How many films has he been in? He basically lives in California. And he's like, oh, this is my city. He doesn't belong in my city. Trump is older than you? <laughs> has His family has more history in New York. What are you talking? How is it your city? You know what? Forget it. It's my city. Since we're just making claims, I didn't know we were back to that. We're making claims? It's my city. I got Manhattan. That's it. I got Manhattan. And I got the Bronx, because I like the way those people uh, do things. Though Those are mine now. My city? That's how it works? Is that how it works? <laughs> He's absolutely ridiculous. And then here's the thing. Here's the weird thing. He's talking about Trump pretending to be a playboy. Hey, man. The guy was really with supermodels. And, you know, who even cares? I mean, it, good or it's not even good or bad. It's just a thing that he did that the media always loves and will always flock to. There was no pretending, he just did it. It's really, when you have a lot of money, you don't even need to be a billionaire and you can get covered by the media for being a playboy. It's not a fake thing that you have to make up. You know what I mean? It's just so weird, everything he has to say has no substance. He's talking about Trump pretending. He's saying that Trump's a clown. You're the actor. Hey man, you've been pretending for almost a hundred years. You're 80. You've been pretending for half a century, at least. You're, you're King Clown. It's you. You win. That's the thing you win more than anything. You're the King Clown. Whoa, Trump was in what? He was in uh, Home Alone? That was it? This guy, Robert De Niro has been P pretending to be someone or something else forever. And it's only in, since Trump's been in office that we get to see the real him and everybody's displeased. Everybody's like, I wish he was the murderer from Goodfellas. <laughs> I liked them better when he was the guy in Casino <laughs> and they were roughing people up. I liked them better when he used to hang out with Tommy. <laughs> He was he was way he was way nicer, way better when he was a gangster, roughing people up on screen. 
you know, the suit, you know, the scene, they open up, they open up the trunk, you know, with Tommy. Ah, I, I liked them better back then. Do you know how bad of a person you have to be? <laughs> that everybody's just like, ah, oh, man, I wish, I wish he was just a murderer again. I mean, I liked him so much when he was a murderer. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. You're the one. And then to say that Trump bought votes just doesn't even make sense. Again, he, he just has no substance. There's just no substance to what he's saying. You can That's how you can tell this was rushed. Like, they are really in damage control. Trump did something massive in the Bronx. And a lot of people aren't taking in how crazy it is. But the Biden administration, they understand completely how crazy that was. They get it completely. That Trump is going for it. He's going everywhere libertarians the bronx bodegas anywhere he can go he's like let's go let's get out to the american people and the administration currently they know we can't get this guy in front of too many people we can't even have him debate in front of an audience we can't even have him sit down for an interview without planning the whole thing out sad but it's true we got more de niro here i know it's hard but let's get through this. We've got a few more minutes of De Niro. And then those two guys behind him are actually uh, former uh, J6. They were they were at uh, they were police officers, Capitol Police officers. They were there on J6. A lot of people say different things about these guys. We'll get into that when the uh, one giant gentleman starts speaking. Let's get into it. That's what oh, again, it was way too fast. Why do I always do this, guys? This is how I listen to things. My bad. Let's go. Why I needed to be involved and wanted to be involved in the new ba Biden Harris ad because it shows the violence of Trump and reminds us that he'll use violence against anyone who stands in the way of his megalomania and greed. But it's a coward's violence. Do you think Trump ever threw a punch himself or took one? This guy who ran and hid in the White House bunker when there were protesters outside? No way. He doesn't get blood on his hands. No, he doesn't. He directs the mob to do his dirty work for him by making a suggestion, an inference. And his gang grovels and follows his obvious order. It's no surprise that the murder rate and other violent crimes peaked under Trump and a falling under Biden. And now he's promising to use our own military to attack U.S. citizens. That's the tyrant. That's the tyrant he's telling us he'll be. And believe me, he means it. When Trump ran in 2016, it was like a joke. This buffoon running for president. No, never could happen. We'd forgotten the lessons of history that showed us other clowns who weren't taken seriously until they became vicious dictators. With Trump, we have a second chance. And no one is laughing now. This is the time to stop him by voting him out once and for all. We don't want to wake up after the election saying, what, again? My God, what the hell have we done? <clears throat> We can't have that happen again. Yesterday was Memorial Day. It's a good time to reflect on how Americans fought and died so that we may enjoy the freedoms guaranteed to us by a democratic government. A government that, as President Lincoln said, of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Under Trump, this kind of government will perish from the earth. I don't mean to scare you. No, no, wait, maybe I do mean to scare you. If Trump returns to the White House, you can kiss these freedoms goodbye that we all take for granted. And elections, forget about it. That's over, that's done. If he gets- I'm sorry, I don't like to interrupt clips usually, but this guy said that if Trump's in office, that this kind of government that's currently in power will perish from the earth. Hey, I'm on board, Robert. Robert. Robert, stop it here. You got me. I'm in. I'm in, Robert. You said they'll be gone? Hey, I am in, Robert. You 
you win. You got me. I'm on board. <laughs> he, he just created thousands of Trump voters. If if this guy gets in office, you can say goodbye to the corruption that we hold so dear. You can. <laughs> are you you? We can't wake up one day and live in an actual free society. We can't have that. You want to wake up and be like, what again? With the freedom? Oh, oh, the sorrow. <laughs> What's he talking about? It's so, it's so incredible because even after him repeating this over and over and over again, he is still deep into his notes. Look at this. Bro, you say this every, every few months, you say these exact same things. You're an actor. You memorize scripts that are 600 pages long. You can't remember one speech that you've been saying for three years? What's going on, man? Get this guy a teleprompter or something. Might as well. I guess he's a part of the Biden campaign. You know, everybody that's part of the Biden campaign needs a teleprompter. <laughs> needs a teleprompter that goes nice and slow. You get him one already. But it's just really funny. And then I got to just bring up really quick. I'm sorry to interrupt. You know I don't like to interrupt clips. You know I let him run. But De Niro's a special case. It's a special type of TDS. And if I expose you to it too much uninterrupted, it could come through the screen and affect you. I don't want that to happen to anybody. The fact that he said that violence, I, I think he said violence and crime, are falling under Biden? Are falling? What are you... See, again, that's the thing. That's why this guy's so rich. He's been so rich for so... He's so rich... That he's like, I'm 80. I'll have another baby. What do I care? Yeah, whatever. I'll be gone. I'll be gone 10, 15 if I'm lucky. Kid will be fine. Kid will be fine. I'll leave the kid 50 mil. Kid will be fine. It's fine. Are you kidding me? All of us, all of us regular people are like, oh, I'm 35. I have to have the kids and be done with it because I can't, we can't afford to have kids any later. He's like, I'll have them till I'm done, whatever. <laughs> but uh, when you're that rich, you just don't get it. You're like, yeah, violence is falling. You live in a gated community. W what do you know? What do you know about what? You live in a gated community, and look look behind him right now. You got police officers. You got ex-police officers. You have all sorts of security all the time. You probably have security around your house. And you're talking about, like, what? Violence is falling. You've never been exposed to it. And I have to say, when he's talking about Trump throwing a punch, you're an actor. You're, an, you're a Hollywood actor. What punches have you thrown? What punches are you throwing? You're an 80-year-old actor. Oh, wow. He's actually older than Trump. Wow. I said that he was younger than Trump. He's actually older than Trump. Whoa. Jeez. Wow. And he's still better cognitively than Biden. Come on. Come on. De Niro for president. Forget it. Might as well. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's move on with this clip. Hudson, I can tell you right now, he will never leave. He will never leave. You know that. He will never leave. What does that mean? Is that the country we want to live in? Do we want him running this country? <laughs> and saying, I'm not leaving, I'm dictator for life. I hope this new ad campaign, campaign reaches outside the bubble to remind supporters of what a danger he is to our lives. This is not a threat. This is a reality. And that's why I've joined the Biden-Harris campaign, because the only way to preserve our freedoms and hold on to our humanity is to vote for Joe Biden for president. Really. Do, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. It's it's interesting. It's interesting when you hear guys like that say that. They say we don't have a choice. I think that's what they want. Because there is a choice. There's a choice. Every every election there's a choice. He's just like, no, no, no choices. The guy that I want, the guy that I want, that's the choice. Because the other guy, you know, I, I made up a bunch of things about the other guy. You can go and watch a video about it. This is the only choice. Come on, guys. You got to believe in me. I'm Robert De Niro. What? Hey, man. 
You you haven't been the best role model for kids and stuff. You know that, right? Here, let's play the the last part where he gets uh triggered because apparently there's somebody close enough, standing close enough to actually call him out. So you actually hear Robert De Niro have a back and forth with somebody, which is really surprising. Here, check this. Out. They are the true heroes. These guys are the true heroes. They stood and put their lives on the line for these low lives, for Trump. They lied under oath. They lied under oath. Right. Who lied under oath? Those what are you, what are you telling me? You. Those two traitors lied. Excuse me? Those two traitors behind you. They lied under oath? That's right. What are you saying? They're traitors. They're, tra they're traitors. You gotta, I don't know, I don't even know how to deal with you, my friend. I don't even know how to deal with you. They stood there, they didn't have to. And there were other ones in there who probably were in with them a little bit too, and they found a way to get around. Not these guys. They stood there and fought for us, for you. For you. Well, they weren't fighting for me. No, they, no, they fought for you, buddy. You're able to stand right here now. They are the true heroes. I'm honored to be with these two heroes today from former Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn and former Metropolitan Police Officer Michael Fanon. So Harry Dunn is the guy that speaks next. Um, well, actually, this Mike guy speaks, but he has a lot of the same things to say. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, Harry, Harry Dunn. Now, a lot of people, like like that gentleman said, he called them traitors. He said they lied under oath. A lot of people are saying that this gentleman, Harry Dunn, he actually started his, when he was talking in front of the committee, he started off by saying, let's bow our heads for the people or the officers that passed away. He was talking about Sicknick. Now, Sicknick passed away because of a stroke. The, um, the coroner, after the autopsy, said that it had nothing to do with what happened in J, uh, at J6th. And he still is claiming that this gentleman passed away in the line of duty, which, based on what the coroner has said, based on what they found after looking into him after he passed, and, you know, condolences to his family, they found that that was not true. So a lot of people feel like this gentleman started his, his testimony in front of that committee on a lie and there's other things as well but that was the most glaring one now uh let's listen to this guy talk just a little bit do i already have it on yeah i have it no i, ha I have it on normal speed wow to protect our democracy to protect each other to make sure everybody got to go home that night that's what we fought for that day the fight for a lot of us didn't end on january 6th that evening when we went home the fight still continues now what happened that day was an attempt to halt, to overthrow uh, an election. Donald Trump is the greatest threat to our democracy and the safety of communities across the country today. He has encouraged and continued to encourage political violence. We've been called traitors just today. We were all called traitors on January 6th for doing our job. And yes, we protected Republicans. We protected Democrats alike. It's not about the story that we don't agree with. Political violence is never acceptable. But you have a presidential candidate, you have a presidential candidate that champions it, that encourages it, that supports it. We cannot have that. Officer Sicknick, he died the day after January 6th. They said it was because of a stroke, but the, the events of January 6th caused it. His father said it best, Charles, Charles Signet. Trump is the reason why my son is dead. Trump does whatever will get him votes and helps Donald Trump. He is about himself. He calls the criminals who attacked our capital patriots. He calls the men and women who died serving and protecting this country suckers and losers. He constantly echoes the words of dictators and invokes the language of Nazi Germany, embracing political violence, pledging to rule as a dictator on day one. Those aren't our talking points. Those aren't news, left news talking points. He said it. Americans need to wake up. This is not a drill. 
Mr. Nero said he's not trying to scare you. When I, I just unsuccessfully ran for office. I just wanted to stop it right there because this is where it gets a little serious, all right? Now, De Niro, he always just does the De Niro thing. He just says the things. They don't make sense. They don't have to. There's no substance. Fine. But this guy gets in front of everybody. While he's looking at points, like right now, I have points based on what he said. For him to be looking at a page like this, and put his head up and say, these aren't talking points. When he is saying, here's the thing. He has all the same talking points as Nancy Pelosi, as Kareen Jean, whatever her name is. I don't know what her, what is it? Puri or whatever. I don't know. I, ca I call her Kareen Jean. Mean Kareen Jean. Never answers a question. He has the same talking points as her. Same talking points as everybody who's against Trump. Same talking points as people in the administration. That it's a threat to democracy. That that he's all about himself. That he calls people who serve the country suckers and losers. Comparisons to Hitler. Day one dictator. And then he has the nerve to say, these aren't talking points. And then I stopped it where I stopped it because he said he successfully, unsuccessfully ran for office. So how... I'm not going to say anything about his testimony that day, but if you're going to look at me and have all the same talking points as the current administration, and then on top of that, you're also trying to get, get into politics and you think I'm going to take what you have seriously. You think what you have to say about Trump. You think I'm going to take that seriously. Are you, I don't know what's going on nowadays, why it's becoming so blatant. If it's on purpose I, or if, if the, the seams are just coming loose or maybe they're frantic. They just can't. I, I don't know. I don't know. But this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It sounds like Kareen actually wrote this for him. He's saying all the things that they constantly say. Point after point. And then looks at us and says, these aren't talking points. <sighs> are you sure, man? Running for office. I wonder I wonder what he's running as. Think that guy's running as a Republican? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if he's running as a Republican or if he's running as a Democrat. I, I wonder. While he stands with Robert De Niro, as Robert De Niro throws out this casual, everyday, what he just does, word salad of just no substance and I hate Trump. Just bitter word salad. <laughs> b b word salad with bitter dressing on top. Uh, I'm supposed to believe what this guy has to say. Not likely. But I just wanted to show you guys that. I think it's getting a little silly at this point. Um, there was somebody from the Trump campaign who spoke on this afterwards. I guess I'll show you these this guy's words as well. Let's go. Thank you, everybody. Jason Miller with the Trump campaign here with Caroline Levitt and Stephen Chung. So the Biden folks have finally done it. After months of saying the politics had nothing to do with this trial, they showed up and made a campaign event out of a lower Manhattan trial day for President Trump. In fact, Biden's cronies had a printed out campaign sign saying Biden Harris. So why the change? Why is Joe Biden now making this a campaign event after months of weaponizing the legal system against President Trump? Because Joe Biden's numbers are in the tank. The headline for today in Politico very simply said Dems in freak out over Joe Biden. Joe Biden is losing nationally, he's losing in every single battleground state, and President Trump's numbers continue to rise. And the best that Biden can do is roll out a washed up actor. And don't worry, my remarks will be shorter than the Irishman. I won't make you suffer for three hours. But the best they can do is roll out a washed up actor. Last week, President Trump spoke in the Bronx, where had over 25,000 people show up to rally around him. And the best the Biden campaign could do was put out a web video with Robert De Niro. There is nothing behind the Biden campaign. Their numbers are in the toilet. Kamala Harris is a terrible alternative. And it's all an attempt 
to try to turn around the Biden campaign. Now, what's happening here in Manhattan? We're in closing arguments for the Biden trial. We've been here for six weeks. Nobody has said that President Trump did anything wrong. We have a highly conflicted judge with an unconstitutional gag order, and everybody sees this case for what it is. In fact, the New York Post this morning, with the headline from Jonathan Turley, as Trump trial comes to close, DA's flimsy case is nothing to brag about. Everybody knows this case is complete garbage. President Trump did nothing wrong. This is all politics. If you don't think this is politics, then why do the Democrats wheel out a retread like Robert De Niro? To tra- <laughs> Harsh words for Robert De Niro, man. I don't know why De Niro's putting himself in this situation. That was Jason Miller again. Everything is, seems to be falling apart. Trump support. He, he He's getting support from places where people didn't think he'd get any support from the cases are showing themselves to be flimsy as they have been the whole time and you know it's go- it's going to result it's going to result in a lot of liberal tears a lot a lot and and then after those liberals cry those tears right and there's going to be a little bit of a flood they're going to blame climate change it's we, we've seen this before folks <laughs> stupid joke dumb joke anyways guys just wanted to show you guys all that de niro's back at it again i'm sure he'll do even more uh like subscribe turn on the notifications helps the channel tremendously and other than that i'm out